everybody. This is Mike with On Point Preparedness. Sorry I didn't get that news update out for you last weekend. I actually saw some very interesting articles that I started compiling into this theme that I'm doing. So I'm, I may do it sometime mid this week uh, if I can get around to it. But I, I did want to touch on the Chosen series again because uh, this is just outright unbelievable what happened at the March for Life. Um, Jonathan Rumi, who is the actor who plays Jesus, was, I guess, some kind of keynote speaker at this event. And suddenly you can really start to see why this is just more than a TV show. I mean, that, that's a very common argument, I think, for people that are supporters of the, of the show. They will say, you know, this isn't meant to be a substitution for the Bible. Uh, you know, this is supposed to be something that is providing encouragement, entertainment, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, we are supposed to put just this skirmish demarcation line in between TV land and, and reality. But, you know, as a lot of people have exposed within the show itself, there's a lot of unbiblical things coming about. There's definitely the unequally yoking together of different faiths within the banner of Christianity. Again, the big one being Mormonism uh, and the influences of the uh, the directors and producers. I, I forget like exactly where all the Mormons were and the Roman Catholics were that were uh, helping to guide the biblical criteria on this film. But again, they're involved. Um, but now we're seeing that you know, it's going far beyond the film. It, it is where now these people are essentially poster child of Christianity and they're being called to speak at these very big events and you'll be shocked to hear what they have to say. They are literally leading people into false gospels by by the masses. So it you know, it is not just a TV show. It's not just entertainment. It is quite literally a huge spiritual deception. So let's go ahead and take a look here. And um, we are going to uh, EWTN which is a Catholic uh, radio station and TV station. And I'm not going to go through all of this for copyright purposes, but if you do uh, look this up on EWTN, there's, there's a lot of youth in this crowd. And in the first five minutes, just how much praise and cheers and a lot of girls, you know, younger girls just screaming, um, it, it, al it almost is like sort of a concert. Um, and so my, my friend Connie at the page Exhort and Contend, if you want to go ahead and like her page, she shares a lot of good exposure on spiritual deception. Uh, she posted on this as well. So you can see a little bit of what she has to add to the story. But the, the main thing that I wanted to focus on is right here around 1430. So he talks about how we can have a greater relationship with God, a closer relationship with God, and just hear what he has to say here. We'll back it up just a little. All aim to enter into our golden years, followed by the final stages of our earthly existence. Nannies and pop pops, every one of us, if we are called to it. How can you make a difference? Number one, pray the rosary. St. Padre Pio said, the greatest weapon against the devil we have is the rosary. Try it. Just the massive amount of prayers, uh, like not prayers, but cheers coming out from this audience about praying the rosary. If you're not familiar with Catholicism, again, Catholics will say we don't worship Mary, but <laughs> for all intents and purposes, praying to Mary um, asking her to intercede on your behalf, making shrines to Mary, and having a rosary dedicated to the Mary. I mean, even the Catholic Church itself says that she is the mediator of all graces, which is, which is very blasphemous. The Bible says that there is only one mediator between man and God, and that is Jesus Christ. And so, you know, I, I used to be Roman Catholic, and back then you would, you would pray to... Mary, 
you would pray to a whole bunch of different saints. I even had little cards, little saint cards, and each saint had their own specialty that you prayed to. I remember praying to St. Anthony for lost things. Anytime I lost something, I'd pray to this saint or that saint, uh, or you'd pray to Mary. It's all about, Catholicism is all about putting mediators between man and God, which is completely unbiblical. You know, now that the veil has torn down, uh, we can go directly to God through Christ's sacrifice. And so, you know, priests as a mediator, you know, for confession of your sins. You know, don't don't repent directly to God. You've got to go to a priest. And there's actually all these rules and regulations that if you have moral sin on your soul and you don't go to a priest and confess that, they say you will go to hell. I mean, there, there's all these all these things are just completely unbiblical. But just seeing this chosen actor glorified on this pedestal based on all the cheers of the crowd and him saying, go pray the rosary, which is a form of idolism and just the massive amounts of cheers from the crowd. It's absolutely, it should break your heart. It really should. This has gone far beyond just a TV show. And the, the tentacles of this thing just keep spreading and spreading and spreading. Um, I want to sh- share with you another reason why this is, and this is uh, something that Connie shared, uh, a really good screenshot here of why this is no longer just entertainment, just a television show. And, and by no means is this a rarity. Uh, there's other examples of this as well. But this person who commented said, Jonathan Rumi is by far the best Jesus I have ever seen on stage or screen. His portrayal is so subtle yet powerful, full of such compassion and sorrow, joy and humor, strength and vulnerability. It has restored my flagging faith. This is the Jesus I crave, the Jesus my heart has always longed for. I'm starting to see Jonathan's faith face in my head when I pray. Is this idolatry? Probably. But if loving Jonathan's Jesus is wrong, I don't want to be right. You know, just cracking jokes. I and mean, this is the very similar to, uh, was it Dallas Jenkins, the, the, the director? Uh, I have showed you in a previous video, and other people have exposed as well as and, you know, any of the critics. He's it's just this mockery, jest, joking, jokingness, uh, and, th- and this is sort of the same thing. But if loving jo- Jonathan's Jesus is wrong, I don't want to be right. This this jest uh, and jokingness, it's it's just not appropriate. It's absolutely not appropriate. When we watch this clip, um, and and maybe I'll just replay it here. He said that. Padre Pio said that the rosary is one of the closest ways you can get to God, or, or something similar to that, I'm paraphrasing. Uh, so if you're not aware of who Padre Pio is, this is on Jonathan Rumi official Instagram. Uh, he is a saint, uh, as defined by the Catholic Church. Biblically, it says that if you, are a, if, if you are part of the body of Christ, you're a believer in Jesus Christ, and you've repented of your sins, and you, you've been born again, you're defined as a saint. The Catholic Church's way is there's this whole canonization type of process in order to elevate people to sainthood. Anyways, he has supposedly had the stigmata, which is something um, around the Catholic Church where they say that people receive the crucifixion marks on their hands and feet. And so, you know, this this person is highly elevated in the Catholic Church, but it really is necromancy. Uh, He died in 1968. His body didn't decompose, and so they say that uh, this is basically a miracle. We'll we'll just actually look at, see what Jonathan says here. Visiting St. Padre Pio, one of the most powerful saints and witnesses to the suffering of the miracles of Christ in the 20th century, as well as, this is important, as well as one with whom I've had personal interactions. The first priest on record to have had the stigmata physically documented multiple times. Check him out if you feel compelled to know more. Um, or ask for his help if you need any additional divine witness in the clouds praying on your behalf to Christ. I mean, there's a, there's another example right there. Don't go directly to God. You know, here's just another person you can you can have as someone praying on your behalf to Christ. You're not. They don't. They won't say this explicitly, but it's it's essentially implied. You cannot go to Christ on your own behalf, or you cannot go to God on your own behalf. You've got to go to these people that are elevated under the Catholic definition of saint, or you've got to go to Mary, or you've got to go to a priest. And this is exactly why 
one of the many reasons why Catholicism is a different gospel. It's completely different. It is not other Christian faith. Um, but here, going back to the statement here, he said, he has had pers- with one whom I've had personal interactions. Uh, Padre Pio died in 1968. It's not like they met uh, physically. So he has had personal interactions, which it's implied that he has somehow met with him in the spiritual realm. This is necromancy, which the Bible absolutely forbids. And here in this March for Life speech, you know, he's essentially like, you know, again, leading people back to Padre Pios. Um, you know, this, you have to see the spiritual powers and principalities that are, that are interworking very subtly. On, I mean, to those with discernment, it's not subtle anymore. But it started off very subtly, and it gradually grew and grew and grew. I want to share with you um, something else. So this is uh, David Amito, his Instagram. He played John the Baptist in The Chosen. You can see him here. Uh, And if you look at one of his Instagram photos, this was back on April 10th, 2020. Uh, He says, It is with total surprise that Antrim is the number one trending film in the U.S. right now on Amazon Prime, written and directed by myself alongside my friend and creative partner, uh, also surprising, our little satanic film trends more than Jesus this Easter. Huge thanks for your support. Now, that was it. That, that was the only description on this photo. But, of course, um, quite a while back, this was exposed. And so you see that he's edited this, although it was like 83 weeks ago. But said, special note to the concerned fans of The Chosen. First off, rest at ease. I'm not, in fact, a Satanist. This movie's just just a horror movie. It is not real, and it was made simply to scare people. I am proud that our little film, shot for $19,000 by three schmucks in the woods, trended higher than the highest grossing film of all time. Um, I know writing our, quote, little satanic film will be taken literally by many, but no, please know this was just a joke, because I'm not Christian and actually don't believe in the devil. Uh, and I... Do not hold Christian beliefs. So the, the last of this here, he says, hey, flat out, I'm not Christian. So he's like, sorry if you're offended. You know, don't watch if you're offended. But I'm not Christian. But still, for, for those that aren't part of the body of Christ, that aren't true believers, that don't have discernment, I mean, this is the, the overall theme. You can see it here again, right? So people saying The Chosen, it's just entertainment. It's just a film. You need to separate the film from reality. Here you have again. Uh, this um, this guy who played John the Baptist. I, I know this film will be taken literally by many, but it's just a joke. It's just a horror film. Separate you know the TV show from reality. But you all know that it's not just a TV show. I mean, these you see Baphomet here. I mean, this this is this is feeding things uh, through your eyes into your spirit. I mean, it, it, it will affect you. It affects people. And the fact that this is a highly grossing film, um, you know, this, this is influencing people. It's influencing the youth. It's just as similarly here influencing the youth, the chosen. You can hear the youth and, and all the ladies screaming in the crowds. Uh, and, and they're being influenced in the wrong way. So... We will likely, you know, I'm, I'm not going to cover The Chosen more and more and more. There's exposure pages that do that. Actually, I should have mentioned it on Facebook. Uh, if you just look up The Chosen Exposed, there's a lot of people that post on this daily in case you want more information to help get you over that hurdle to finally cut this off and to, and to warn other people about it. Uh, this will probably be the last thing that I talk about on it. But we will likely see this uh, act like leaven. It already has. It's just a little leaven leavens the whole lump. Anything that is just so extremely popular is just a warning sign. It really is just a warning sign that that we should take heed of. And and odds are when something within Christianity gets to this level of popularity, there's likely spiritual deception inside of this. So I got uh, just just two more tabs here, uh, mostly around this whole Padre Pio's thing. But you know, inside the Catholic Church. There is a lot of necromancy that happens. Uh, it's it's not maybe a, like 
across all of Catholicism, uh, but definitely in, in parts of Europe, it definitely is. If you look up this Czech Church of Bones, again, there's a whole history behind it, but essentially the entire church is, uh, has all these bones uh, decorating it, human bones. Uh, in this uh, part of Europe, they have bejeweled skeletons of Catholicism's forgotten martyrs. Uh, you know, here is just an example where you can see the subtitle here to the Saint Diatus, um, Diotadus, maybe. Uh, nuns molded a wax face over the upper half of his skull and fashioned his mouth with a fabric wrap. Uh, again, this is not of the faith. This is so far from the faith. And even if it's just a church here or there, again, the overall foundation of Catholicism is not on Jesus Christ. It really isn't. It's a different gospel. And they focus on putting all these different mediators between man and God and all these other unbiblical things that come out from Catholicism is simply because it's not based on the rock, which is Jesus Christ. It's not the true faith. So you're seeing the real fruit of it come about. So that's all I had to share with you all today. Uh, again, maybe, don't don't uh, hold me to it, but maybe I can get another video out, out tonight so long as the kids get to bed. If not, um, maybe later this week. And then also, um, Ashley, who's uh, admitting right now, we actually had part of her testimony with regards to anxiety, and I testified about uh, a lot of anxiety that I had as well uh, a couple months ago. Uh, I'm going to be going on her channel in maybe this Wednesday night or Friday night, and we're talking about how to do a proper uh, Christian rebuke or reproval. Uh, we're still setting up the dates and times for that. So if you check out my Facebook post, uh, one, I don't even have a Facebook post yet, but I, I will post it on Facebook to let you know of a concrete date and time. Uh, so go ahead and uh, like the On Point Preparedness Facebook page so you can keep in touch with that as well, as well as um, um, be aware of her channel. I believe it's called Aspects for Ashley. As Ashley, if you want to post it in the chat, that's fine too. So you can direct people there to subscribe. So until the next one, this is Mike with On Point Preparedness. God bless everybody.